there, my name's Catherine, I hope you're doing well. Today's video is a little bit different to any video I've done before. I'm gonna do that trend where people read the one star reviews of their favourite books. This is not an original video by any means, I've seen quite a few people do it and I just think it looks really fun. I wanted to see how people roast books that I would die for. I've never done a video where I'm reacting to something before really. Well, I suppose I suppose the book vlogs, I'm kind of reacting in real time to what I'm reading, but this is a little bit different, so we see how it goes. So I've made a list of some books that I love. A lot of these will have been mentioned in a video I did recently talking about my all-time favourite books, but some of these I've read after that. I'm going to be using Storygraph as well because I don't have a Goodreads account anymore. I think it only makes sense to do my favourite book from last year first of all, which is The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. I loved this book with my whole heart. I used to be such a fangirl for things when I was a teenager and the older I've gotten the kind of that that part of me has kind of dampened a little bit but this book brought back those feelings in a way I was worried I would never feel before. So it means a lot to me. That being said I know that this book won't be to everyone's cup of tea so I think that the reviews for this one are going to be quite interesting. Okay, so there's a review here that says DNF at 20%, literally can't stand the damsel in distress. How did book talk graduate from Feyre to this? I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> I would definitely choose Evangeline over Feyre. Evangeline is not a damsel in distress. She's just a little bit naive, you know? Not every female heroine in a fantasy series has to be a warrior. Some can be girly and like pretty things and want to fall in love and stuff and still be strong and cool. So I don't appreciate that. <laughs> I have had to move over from Storygraph actually because I don't know how to filter only one star reviews on Storygraph. So I've moved over to Goodreads instead. I'm still baffled this is classified as why I have read picture books more intense than this. The writing is just like, this forest is so magic and fairy tale. Like, wow, much magic, much fairy tale. It's supposed to be whimsical. It's a writing style. It's a whimsical writing style. Oh my God. Firstly, I'd like to congratulate Miss Garber, my least favorite book for the second year running. Bravo. Oh no! If Eva Jax has a million haters, then I am one of them. If they have 10 haters, then I am one of them. If they only have one hater, then that is me. Okay, I can. I'm gonna move on from this one because I get the gist. <laughs> Let's go to the Song of Achilles because I, I feel like there'll be some good one-star reviews of this one. I hated pretty much everything about this. The only reason I didn't DNF was because I wanted to watch them die suffering and begging for death. <laughs> No! I wasn't four pages into this before I renamed it in my head as the worst published fanfic ever. Granted, I haven't re yet read Fifty Shades of Grey, so that is liable to change. I suppose I can disagree that it is fanfic. This screams codependency, but make it Greek so it's a tragedy in <laughs> instead of toxic shit. Wow. It's 90% Patroclus being the typical fainting besotted damsel in distress, who just so happens to be a boy. I don't think Patroclus is a damsel in distress at all. I feel like he's very much the opposite. I haven't read it in a very long time, but from what I remember, didn't he like kind of come into his own as a healer and everything? Let's try Babel, because I know Babel was quite a divisive novel. My sister-in-law really did not enjoy it, but I give it five stars. I love this book so much. Let's see. Take an interesting magic system and fail to address the obvious contradictions even a child could foresee. Right, I've read Babel once when it just came out, so the magic system is fuzzy in my head. And I do remember, because it's such a complex magic system based in linguistics and drawing magic from the meanings lost in translation, I think a lot of people found holes within the magic system. I do understand that, but for me, whilst I was reading it, I found it very easy to just let myself fall into the book and the writing and just let myself believe it. And when you let yourself do that, I truly think <laughs> you will enjoy it the way it's meant to be. A lot of the problems I had with the Poppy War are only magnified here, so maybe RF Quang isn't for me. That's quite interesting because I'm currently reading the Poppy War and I'm finding it much harder to get into than Babel. It'd be interesting to reread Babel now that I've read Poppy War because maybe I would be able to see more similarities because it has been quite a while since I've read Babel but for me I think you can tell in Babel she's improved her writing craft so much more. The problems I'm having with the Poppy War right now is pacing of it is very weird I think because the first half of the book takes place in a school academy setting over the course of years and then the second half where I'm at now is 
taking place after that whereas usually during school get settings I'm kind of used to like a book per year like it's done in Babel that's pretty much a book that takes place over the course of one academic year I'm pretty sure if I'm remembering it right or is it four I can't remember now but anyway Babel is like much more contained story I'm seeing more about not liking the, the magic system with translation and linguistics and stuff and the etymology maybe that was fine for me because I don't have a lot of knowledge on it anyway maybe if you know more about linguistics the flaws in the system will be more obvious to you because I don't. I'm able to be like, la la la, makes sense to me, what do I know? Let's try Strange Sally Diamond, which is a book that I read really recently that I loved. I give it five stars. Disappointed at how it ended, a huge letdown. What was even the point of it all if that's how you're gonna end the story? I don't agree. I did love the ending, but the ending was whiplash. One of the most shocking endings of a book I've read this year because you just I'm not going to spoil it but it's just not how you expect the narrative to go. Oh this person said Eleanor Oliphant meets room bleak nasty unedifying. That's a really good way of pitching this book actually it is Eleanor Oliphant meets room but that sells it for me and I think it really did deliver that as well. A lot of people saying it's sick dark and disturbing but that's kind of like why I liked it. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people who gave it one star didn't like how dark it was. I like how dark it was. I didn't know it was going to be so dark going into it, even though it does say on the cover it's a crime novel, but you should look up trigger warnings before you go into it. I don't think it, everything I'd heard about the book before reading it hadn't made it clear to me how dark it was going to be. So just keep that in mind. Let's look up Act Your Age, Eve Brown. This is my favorite Talia Hibber book. They're both horny and annoying. I hated every page. <laughs> Fair, way too cringy for me. I mean, this was one of the lesser cringy romances I've ever read. So I don't really know if romance is your genre, if Act Your Age, Eve Brown was too cringy. I absolutely loved the previous two in the series, but this one lost me right from the beginning. That's so interesting. I loved the first two in the series as well as this one, but this one was just a clear favorite for me. I always think romance is like the most divisive of genres because when it comes to romance, I think everyone is so particular on what they like and what they think is too cringy and what they think is too much sex and what they think stretches the realms of believability and stuff. But let's go for, let's go for Piranesi because Piranesi as of right now, I would say is my favorite book. I also know that this one is quite a divisive book. <laughs> um, is that it? What do you mean? Is that it? Did you read the same book I did? Reading this book felt exactly like listening to someone tell you in excruciating detail all about the crazy dream they had last night. Burly structured, grasping at meaning unsuccessfully and just so, so uninteresting. I mean, I don't not agree, but I also, I want to hear about that crazy dream. I get it. I get how annoying it is when someone starts talking and the first thing that comes out of the, their mouth is, I had this dream last night. But if they dreamt what happens to Piranesi, <laughs> I'd be like, bitch, tell me more. This book felt more like a draft of random ideas than a finished work. Horribly organized. Empty descriptions? The descriptions in this book are so immersive. Reading Piranesi is like having a lobotomy by reading. <laughs> no. No, I can't do it. I'm not going further. <laughs> Let's read the one star reviews for Rouge. It's another weird book, another divisive book. I think I really like divisive books. This was like suffering through someone telling you their dreams every single morning and they're basically the same and boring and you just don't give a shit. Do I have a type? Do I have a type of books? That is so unlikely that that would be the same review, right? I mean, again, they're not wrong. It kind of is like that, but the, the dreams are good. <laughs> Trigger warning, Tom Cruise. <laughs> So true. That was the real horror of this book. If you've not read it, oh my God, I can't explain it to you, but Tom Cruise is quite a big part of this book and he is utilized in the most exquisite way. If I ever have to read this much about Tom Cruise again, I'm never reading another book. That's so fair, that is so fair. Can we do Spells for Forgetting? A book that I loved last year that I only gave four stars, but the amount I think about it, I really think I should have given it five stars. I sure wish I had a spell for forgetting this book. Oh my God, <laughs> I should have seen that coming. I really don't like when every POV character has a secret, but we don't even know what it is, even though we are in their heads. Yeah, I can see why that is annoying. And I think maybe 
at another time that would have annoyed me. I, I think I just read it at the right time for me. I also, it's just the vibes of that book are so exquisite as well. For a book with spells in the title, there was very little magic, disappointing overall. That is fair too. I don't have this criticism for it, but my sister-in-law, we read this together for our book club. She did enjoy this book, but she didn't enjoy it as much as me because she went into it expecting that it was going to be more witchy than it was. And it's not that witchy. There is magic in it, but it's very light magic. No one is practicing magic very much, really. It's more that the setting is magical. That's all I can really say without spoiling too much. So I do, I do see that complaint, but it didn't really bother me. Let's do an Emily Henry. And Book Lovers is my favorite Emily Henry. Ironically, this book will make you no longer a book lover. Oh, harsh, harsh. I know that this is supposed to be light, breezy, brainless chiclet, entirely devoid of any real substance. And it's therefore my mistake for comparing it to legitimate literature and finding it grossly wanting. This is bad folks. I don't think that's fair. I don't particularly like describing it as brainless chiclet and implying that it's not legitimate literature. I think that's a bit snobby. The real romance was between Nora and her peloton. <laughs> that's funny. I hate when they call each other by their last names. No reason to be calling each other Stevens and Lastra. <laughs> I'm sorry, I love it when romantic pairings call each other by their last names. I think it, it's my Dramini fan fiction roots for sure. But you better believe in the book that I'm currently writing, my romantic leads are calling each other by their last names. So that the first time they say their first names to each other, you know something is about to go down. I absolutely love it. It gets me every time. Let's look up Swift and Saddled because that's been my favorite romance this year. I've literally mentioned Swift and Saddled. I think in every video since I've read it. I don't know who needs to hear this, but not liking Taylor Swift does not mean you have internalized misogyny. That's fair. You ever blank out for the last 30 seconds of drive before you get somewhere where you feel happy that you're home, but you had no idea what happened? That's this book. Oh no. Oh, someone's saying that they gave this a one star, but they gave five stars to Done and Dusted. That's so weird because I gave Done and Dusted 2.5 stars. I did not love that book that much. But this one, chef's kiss for me. This person hates the insta love trope in romance novels. I find this less insta lovey than Done and Dusted, even though Done and Dusted was supposed to not be insta lovey. But I don't know. I find this one a more believable growth than Done and Dusted personally. Let's look up penance. So I'm seeing a lot of people complaining that it's like info dumpy. It tells everything rather than shows everything. Is that not the whole point of the kind of style of the book? Because it's meant to be written as if it's a true crime novel. I'm also seeing a lot of people complaining that Clark is like taking influence from a real true crime and not reference that at the end of the book, especially when it's a book that's talking about utilizing true crime stories for like commercial gain and things like that, which I do think is something to think about. Yeah, see here this person said, I don't understand how you want to discuss the ethics of true crime as a theme of your story with no acknowledgement of the real murder you're basing your story off of. That sits so horribly with me. I do see that. I don't know what the crime was that she kind of took influence from, but I do see why that is problematic and I don't see why she couldn't have made up a completely fictional true crime because this one is the the crime that does happen in penance is quite specific what happens <laughs> was this book easy to read no but was it worth it also no that's interesting this person went in expecting a crime mystery story and was sorely disappointed i can see that if you're going in expecting it to be like a normal crime thriller it's not that i don't think it is ever it has ever claimed to be that, but I suppose it depends how it's marketed as, doesn't it? I'm gonna do Anna and the French Kiss, which is a throwback, a real throwback to like 2010's booktube. But I love this book and I might reread it this summer because it is a good time. But let's see one star reviews for it. <laughs> Etienne St. Clair is a cheater who pursues the protagonist despite him already having a girlfriend. He's an American boy with a British accent and a French name. If that still hasn't turned you away from this book, let me continue on. <laughs> Absolutely fair. He does do all of that and he is all of those things. And I love him for it. There's cheesy romance and then there's this. If you'd excuse me for a minute, I'll be in the kitchen stabbing myself in the eyes with a fork. I think on that note, 
we'll end this video. <laughs> I had a lot of fun doing that actually. The thing that is lovely about books is everyone's allowed their own opinions and what's a five star read for someone, maybe a one star read for someone else and that's okay. We're all allowed to express ourselves and be kind to one another whilst we do so. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and I hope that you have an amazing upcoming week and I will see you in the next one. Bye!